Make sure you're subscribed to The Word of the Lord Endures Forever. Type The Word of the Lord Endures Forever in your podcast provider. Hit that subscribe button and leave us a five-star review. This will make it easier for other podcast listeners to find The Word of the Lord Endures Forever. The Word of the Lord Endures Forever is brought to you in part by the Lutheran Heritage Foundation. LHF is a recognized service organization of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, dedicated to translating and publishing the books of our Lutheran faith into more than 100 languages for our Christian brothers and sisters around the world. Learn how you can take part in their work at lhfmissions.org. Welcome to The Word of the Lord Endures Forever with Pastor Will Whedon. And he takes joy in your being. These are words that we stagger to believe, to take into our hearts. God singing over me? God delighting in me? God quieting me and my fears with the unfailing assurance of his love? Me? The people in his day would have wanted to ask Zephaniah the same thing. The Word of the Lord Endures Forever is a daily verse-by-verse Bible study with the church, past and present. Pastor Whedon is leading us in a study of the book of Zephaniah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Greetings, people loved by God. Well, we have arrived at our final study in Zephaniah and at the verses that truly form the pinnacle of this prophecy. Before we start digging into those, however, let's do a brief recap of what we covered last time when the prophecy clearly moved from judgment to grace, from law to gospel. God, recall, had promised that he would alter the speech of the peoples, the nations, into a pure speech, and the mark of that purity would be that they would use their tongues to call upon the name of the Lord and serve him with one accord. He promised that his dispersed ones, those scattered among the nations, would bring his offering, the great sacrifice of thanksgiving, offered for the salvation which God so richly and freely bestows upon all in his Christ. He promises that his people will not be put to shame because of their rebellions on that day. Forgiveness and love will drive away shame and guilt, and the result will be, well, a humble people, a people who know that the love they've received from Yahweh is wholly contrary to their deserving, but absolutely sure and certain because it rests in him and in him alone. So his people flee to him for refuge, and their lives begin to actually be shaped in conformity with the law, lives that are just, mouths that are truthful. Remember, above all, that means mouths that speak the truth of God to one another, as in, you are holy in his name, you are beloved, you are his child, and so on. The result will be, that all those who call upon his holy name will be gathered from the nations into his fold, and he will be to them all the great good shepherd of the 23rd Psalm. A reading from the prophet Zephaniah, the third chapter, beginning at the 14th verse. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exalt with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has cleared away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall never again fear evil. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, let not your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. I will gather those of you who mourn for the festival so that you will no longer suffer reproach. Behold, at that time, I will deal with all your oppressors and I will save the lame and gather the outcast and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you in. At the time when I gather you together, 
for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Zephaniah 3, verses 14 through 20. Let us pray. Everlasting God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, grant us your grace that we may make good and diligent study of Holy Scripture, seek and find Christ therein, and through him have eternal life. Graciously grant it, dear Lord God. Amen. Ready to finish up Zephaniah by pondering these comforting words? Let's dig into them. Verse 14. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. So notice how it all swings up into doxology, to praise, to adoration. The people of Zion and Jerusalem, the people whom God has gathered to himself from the nations, with those Jews who have welcomed his salvation, they're all summoned to sing, to rejoice, to exalt. It truly is one of the amazing facts of history that the salvation which God wrought in Jesus Christ set off an explosion of song which has continued to reverberate with joy down to this very day. The first heathen to describe anything of Christians and their worship noted that these weirdos come together early in the morning when they sing to Christ a hymn as to God. In our church's services, we start with singing, continue with singing, and end with singing. We sing all kinds of scripture. We sing the words of ancient canticles and hymns. We sing psalms. We just can't not sing. As I've said before, it's like we're living in the house of Tom Bombadil in The Lord of the Rings, where the hobbits, to their surprise, found that singing and chanting were more natural than speaking. So it is in the church. We have a joy that we just can't stop singing about. And what that joy is, Zephaniah is about to tell you, verse 15. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has cleared away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall never again fear evil. We could never remove the judgments that stood against us. The law of God doesn't compromise or bend. It never says, well, at least you tried. It demands an absolute and inviolable holiness that we have not rendered. And thus, its judgment against us is exactly what we confess in the liturgy, temporal and eternal punishment. But what we could not do, this Yahweh has done, Yahweh in the flesh. He has taken away the judgments of the law against us, and he took them away, not just by getting rid of them, but by becoming flesh and enduring them in our place. He has let them all fall on Jesus. That is how he has removed his judgments against you. That is how he has cleared away all your enemies, Satan, death, hell, and even the accusations of the law itself. He did it by coming in our midst as the true king of Israel. And because he is on our side, among us, with us, we have nothing to fear from evil, not from our sins, not from death, not from anything some enemy can inflict on us. Whatever they bring, they can't separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Here is the great St. Cyril of Alexandria preaching this with power in the 5th century. As far as the deeper meaning of this passage is concerned, it clearly commands Jerusalem to rejoice exceedingly, to be especially glad, to cheer up wholeheartedly as its trespasses are wiped out, evidently through Christ the spiritual and holy Zion, that is the church, the whole multitude of believers is justified in Christ and only in him, by him and through him, we also escape from the harm of the invisible enemies. For we have a mediator who was incarnated in our form, the king of all, that is the word of God, the father. Thanks to him, we do not see evil anymore for we have been delivered from the powers of evil. He, the word, is the armor of goodwill, the peace, the wall, the one who bestows without interruption, the arbiter of the crowns, who shut down the war of the incorporeal Assyrians and made void the schemes of the demons. Is that awesome preaching or what? And that's why the church sings. But there's even more. Verse 16. On that day, It shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, let not your hands grow weak. 
It will be said to Zion by her preachers. That's quite similar to Isaiah 35 or 40 and the way the prophet was commanded to comfort Zion. Don't be afraid, people of God. Don't let your hands grow weak, as in let go of your weapon, the word of God. And now, and now we come to the greatest gem of this entire prophecy. Listen to these words, verse 17. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. I love to remind you that you are people loved by God. You are all loved by him in the gift of Jesus. He is the mighty one to save who shows up smack dab in the middle of us, amongst us, our brother, flesh of our flesh. And he rejoices over you with gladness. He quiets you with his love. And get this, he exalts over you with singing. This is the sole passage I can think of where God is the singer. And what he sings is a love song, a love song about you. I know It sounds loudly, but to me, the picture is of a mom or dad singing a lullaby over their beloved child. A loud lullaby, though, because he gets so excited about you. He loves you, and he takes joy in your being. These are words that we stagger to believe, to take into our hearts. God singing over me? God delighting in me? God quieting me and my fears? with the unfailing assurance of his love, me? The people in his day would have wanted to ask Zephaniah the same thing. You mean us? The same sinners you have so ruthlessly exposed in the first part of your prophecy? Us? It's the same point Paul makes in Ephesians 2, verse 7, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus in all eternity. God will be pointing to us as the objects of his gracious kindness and love, and so we will be singing his praises forever. Verse 18, I will gather those of you who mourn for the festival so that you will no longer suffer reproach. The point was that after Jerusalem's destruction and the disruption of the people's liturgical life of gathering for the feasts, God promises them a restoration. And I don't think it's an accident, folks, that the church's joy in Christ revolves around the three chief feasts of the Old Testament, all fulfilled and all exceeded in Jesus. Passover becomes Easter. Pentecost, well, it remains Pentecost. But with the feast of the ingathering being the nations rather than just crops. And then tabernacles? That's Christmas as we celebrate that God has indeed tabernacled among us in the flesh of his son. Verse 19. Behold, at that time I will deal with all your oppressors, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. Could God say any more clearly, I'm on your side. I'm going to take care of all that oppresses you, everything that weighs you down. I know you're damaged. I know you feel shame. But that shame will become praise and renown for the greatness of your sin will be utterly eclipsed by the greatness of my mercy and my love for you. Verse 20, at that time I will bring you in at the time when I gather you together. For I will make you renowned and praised among the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. God promises that the very forgiveness which is at the heart of his people's joy in him, which sparks their song, is going to become characteristic feature by which his people are known and recognized. They are the people who delight before God in his restoration of their fortunes in Jesus, truly in him, God has given us far more than we ever lost in our father Adam. Far, far more. And for that, all glory be to God on high. 
Now that's a wrap on Zephaniah, though I hope you do take time to go back and memorize chapter 3, verse 17, and let the wonder of it fill your hearts. Next up, though, we're back to a little bit more of St. Paul, his first epistle to Timothy. Till next time then, people loved by God, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Thanks for listening to The Word of the Lord Endures Forever with Pastor Will Whedon. The Word of the Lord Endures Forever is a listener-supported program. You can donate by check. Make your check payable to The Word Endures and send it to Box 616, Collinsville, Illinois, 62234. You can also make a secure online contribution at thewordendures.org. The Word of the Lord Endures Forever is a production of LPR, Lutheran Public Radio.